Hello, my name is Julie and I'm hosting another readathon. So I have had this idea since probably August or September. It literally just dawned on me that this would be a fun themed readathon to make. And that is Freezeathon. This is a wintry readathon that is going to be lasting for the entirety of December 2023. The theme is that there are three epic snow forts that are in the dead of winter in the tundra and they are battling it out for supremacy and they need your help. They need to determine which genre, which vibe of book is best and the only way to do that is of course by reading. The three teams are Fortress Frost, which is for those who are destined for adventure. They want to brave the worst that Mother Nature has to throw at them. They are the bravest fighters. They are ready for the toughest battles and hardest expeditions. And this team is themed all around sci-fi and fantasy. The second team is Castle Coco, which is for those who know that the best part of winter is snuggling inside, warm with a drink and a blanket and of course a good book. They may be unassuming, but they are the fiercest protectors of their home. This team is for reading romance and cozy books like magical realism, coming of age, or cozy fantasy or cozy mystery, anything that brings comfort. And the last team is Icicle Igloo, where we know that the scariest time of year is the dead of winter. Even the elements are out to get you. This team is the cleverest planners and are always one step ahead of anyone who wants to take them down. This team is about suspense, thrillers, horrors, some mysteries. There's some overlap between these teams, as you can tell. You as the reader will choose which team you want to be behind because all of the books that you read will be added to the team's score. And whichever team has the most points at the end of the readathon will be crowned the winner of Freezeathon. Of course, this is all in good fun, but a little competition never hurt to encourage people. First off, all the links are in the description down below to all the information you need. The Instagram for the account where lots of announcements will be made. Then there's also the Discord where a lot of the team communication is happening and you can reach out to me on either of these with any questions you have. And there's also the official rules document with everything that you need to know about this readathon. Lots of frequently asked questions are in there, so check that out. But I'm going to explain how the readathon is going to work and tell you about the different teams and the bonuses that they have. First off, you are going to choose which team you are going to join. Now, you do not have to read books that only have that genre, but it is advantageous for you to pick the team that has the genre of the most books you're planning on reading in that month, because you will get the most points if you read your team's genre. You don't have to lock yourself into only reading one genre for the month. It's just, what are you getting bonus points for? You should sign up in the Google form below for what team you're going to be a part of and sign up on the Discord for your team chat so you can talk with your fellow teammates. Then when December 1st hits, you can start reading and you can start scoring your books. So every time you finish a book, you will go into the Google form that is linked below. It's linked to the Discord, it's linked to the Instagram, everything's linked. And you are going to put in all the information about your book and I have done all the coding for you, so we will get your score. You don't have to keep track of how many points you have, but I'm going to tell you how they are calculated. So for every book you have, there are three types of points. The first is page count points. So for every 100 pages that you complete, you get 10 points or snowballs for your team. So if you are reading a graphic novel or a comic, you will not get bonus points, but basically if you read a book that is 250 pages, you are going to be getting a total of 20 points, not 25. Then you are going to count the superpower prompt points. So there are five superpower prompts. The first is to read a book of your team's genre. The second is to read 
any of the host's favorites, each of our team leads and myself have given a list of six books that they would like you to pick up that they think would be good for the readathon, that's another 10 points. Or for that same prompt, you can do your team's buddy read, which is currently being decided at the moment. So you should definitely head to the Discord. And then the last three are all specific to your team, and we will get into that information in a minute. Then you are going to decide whether this book is going to be attacking another team or defending your team. Because if you're attacking or you're defending, there are different lists of prompts that you're going to use. You are going to select attack or defense, and then you're going to select every single one of the prompts on there that your book applies to. And all of those range from point values of one to six points. So 10 points for every 100 pages, 10 points for every superpower prompt you check off, and you check off as many of the attack or defense prompts as are applicable to your book. Now let's talk about the different teams. So Fortress Frost is our sci-fi fantasy team. I am partially a team lead, but we also have Danny from the Cytonic Reader and Jasmine from February Friday. Both of them are great on Instagram. You should definitely go follow them and you'll be interacting with them in the Discord. And the three superpower prompts are proper preparation to read a book that is over 500 pages long, evergreen eyes to read a book with multiple points of view, and strength in numbers to read a book in a series that is not a trilogy. So it can be a duology, it can be four books, five books, six books, anything like that, as long as it is planned to not be a series with three books. But these are the recommendations that the team has for you. On the left are the winter books that they recommended, whether they are sci-fi or not. And on the right are the sci-fi fantasy books, whether they are wintry or not. Then on to Castle Coco. Our two hosts are Katie at Forevermore Pages and Imogen at Emmy Reads, which both of these were my hosts for Frenathon this year, which was so fun. So glad to have them back. The three superpower prompts for Castle Coco are Familiar Face, which is an author that you've already read sometime in 2023, not in any year before, but specifically in 2023 before. Cold Collaboration, a book with exactly two people on the cover, no more, no less and Frosty Friendship, a book with found family in it. These are all of the host recommendations for Castle Coco. I would like to note, if there is a book in a series on here, you can read any book in the series. So if you have already read Beartown, you can read The Winners, something like that. Icicle Igloo, we actually have three team leads. We have Sarah at Voided Lux. We have Molly at Moon Bloom Books, and we have Tessa at books as meals. The three superpower prompts for this are One Step Ahead, a debut novel, Mary Murder, a book with a death in the synopsis, so it has to be on the blurb that somebody dies or somebody dies in the first chapter of the book, and then Black Ice, a book with a predominantly black cover. And these are all of the recommendations for Icicle Igloo. Now that we've gone through the team specific things, let's go into the attack and defense prompts. So these are all things that for the most part are wintry, that are theming your things around winter specifically. So for attacking, you are going to be choosing one of the other teams that you are not on. So if I'm on Fortress Frost, I might choose Castle Coco, and you are going to be decreasing their point total by a certain amount. If you are defending, you are going to be increasing your team's points. So the page count prompts and the superpower prompts are all positive for your team, just like defense is, and attack is the only time you are subtracting points from another team. This means that no team is ever going to be in the negatives. So there are 18 prompts for attack and 18 for defense. Let's go through the attack prompts first. I have listed the prompts here and I have their point values. All that information is available to you and I'm just gonna run through what they all mean. Frozen Lake is a mostly blue cover. Then Soft Sweater, a paperback book. Polar Power, read a book where the main character is female or under the trans umbrella. Any main character that is not a cis male. For Snowball, Stockpile, read a book with and in the title. 
for Aurora Borealis, read a book that's title is printed in a rainbow color. So Hamnet here is printed in yellow. You want to read a book that is not printed in black, white, or like a metallic. So right here, Brideshead Revisited, this is the gold. We don't want that. You can do pink, yellow, there's blue right here, I have red, things like that. Familiar Fields, read a book from an author that you own many of. So depending on your collection, many can mean different things, but try to get an author that you own three or more books from. Maybe you own a ton of their backlist and haven't read them. For Icy Infiltration, read a book that fits another team's theme. For Weird Weather, read a book that includes art or mixed media or in epistolary format and something, something about this book must not be the normal format for a book. So if it is told in letters, if it has illustrations in the book. So the new Brandon Sanderson books that have full color illustrations in them are a really good idea. If it has art more than just having these chapter things and having art here, if there is art actually within the pages of the book, that counts. That prompt might be a little bit difficult to find books for, but the Discord is there for you to ask questions and find recommendations from other people. For Incredible Iceberg, read a book with an isolated setting. So most of the book should basically take place in only one place. So maybe something that takes place in a haunted house and they basically don't leave the house or they don't leave the property or something like that. Or they're stuck on a mountain or something like that. Basically, the characters don't leave a specified location for the entirety of the book. For Inclusive Igloo, read an author who is a person of color. For Ski Slope, read a sequel. This could also be a prequel. Anything that is not the first book in a series. For Snowman Sentinel, read a TBR veteran. This can be a little bit up to your discretion as to how long the TBR veteran is because everybody's on their own reading journey. For me, I'll be reading a book that I have had on my TBR for probably longer than two years, maybe three years, own for more than two years, something like that. For Brave the Blizzard, read a book that you find personally to be intimidating for one reason or the other. It might be a really long book, it might not have great reviews, or it has really great reviews and that is intimidating to you. And anything that you've been just hesitant about starting because it seems scary. For Alpine Award, read a book that has been nominated or received any award in any year. If you go on the Goodreads page of a book, it will have listed any awards it has been nominated for, including the Goodreads Choice Awards, which the first round of which just came out. So there's a bunch of new books that you can pick out. For First to Fire, read a book with under 30,000 reviews on Goodreads. That's kind of a gauge of how many people have read the book, so you want to be one of the first people to read the book. For Cool Caroling, this is one of the weirdest prompts I have, you are going to shuffle your music to choose your book. You are going to go onto your Apple Music or your Spotify or whatever you use, your music collection, and you are going to press shuffle of all of your music. And the first song that comes up is going to, in some way, dictate what book you're going to read. So for example, if the song that came up was The One by Taylor Swift, I could read a book that has a number in the title because of the title of the song. I could read a book that is grayscale on the cover because the album cover is grayscale. I could read an author that is named Taylor. I could read a book that is a folklore retelling because of the name of the album. I could read a book that is based in the 1920s based on the lyrics. This is up to interpretation, but you just need to somehow link the song whether that is the title, the artist, the album, the album art, or the lyrics to a book in some way. Then for Given the Chills, you are going to read a book with a cold item or word on the cover. So for example, Misery has snow on it. The words cold, cool, winter, snow, anything that you associate with winter, anything like that. And the last prompt for attack is Smooth Slapshot to read a book that includes a sport, competition or trial. That has been pretty popular lately, but I, when I think about winter, I think about hockey. So that's where that came from. And for defense, these are our prompts. Snowy Skies, read a book with a mostly white cover. Tricky Triple Lets, read a book with a cursive title font. 
I have business or pleasure right here where pleasure is in cursive. That counts. The entire title doesn't need to be cursive, but at least one of the words in the title has to be cursive. For Sleet Shield, read a hardcover book. For Trust Your Team, read a book that is very hyped on the book internet. That is up to your own discretion. Whatever books that you keep seeing pushed onto you by your side of the internet, go for that. For New Leak Nordic, read a 2023 release. Or if you're someone who does ARCs, you can read a book that is going to be released in 2024. For Gentle Gingerbread, read a book with a building or setting on the cover. Anything that is recognizably like I pulled out misery before that's a cabin um but magpie this is a room this is a wall of a room this is a crib and everything this is a nursery so if you can tell the setting by the cover you're good for holiday cheer read a book that you were gifted for snowball slinging read a book with a verb in the title so the sun also rises catch 22 uh, Mansfield Park, although it's not used that way. Park is a verb. For winter word, read a book that is a one word title. So no V or A. It must be like Misery or Hamnet or Belladonna. Something like The Shining is two words. Reinforce the Fort, you read a book with a cold setting. So this might be hard to tell ahead of time, uh, but anything where you can tell from the book that at some point in the book, everyone's having to bundle up because it's cold outside, or maybe the whole book is set in the winter. For Jack Frost, read a book that contains a non-human character. If you're a fantasy reader, it can be a book with dragons or vampires or fae. If you're a horror reader, it can be some sort of creature. If you read more realistic fiction, it can be something like a dog or a cat, as long as it's named and shows up multiple times, it'll count. For Colorful Cardigan, read an author who identifies as queer or part of the LGBTQ plus community. For Clever Camouflage, read a book that combines multiple genres. For Glacier Guardian, this one might be a little bit difficult, but read a book that is slow paced. So Storygraph does have a function where you can see how people have rated it if it is fast, slow, or medium paced. So if you want to check ahead of time, that's a good resource. Um, but if you think the book is paced very slowly, um, not that it's a bad book and it's paced badly, but that it is a slow book, you'll get points. For bestie bobsledding, you can do a buddy read or a book club read. So yes, if you do the team buddy read, that counts. Any buddy read at all that you do this month counts and people will be doing unofficial buddy reads in the discord as well as the official team buddy reads. If you're going to be reading a book club book for this just make sure it is a book club pick for December or that includes December if it's like a quarterly book club. Um, not a previous book club pick, something this month. For Happy Hoarfrost, you are going to read a book that currently has an adaptation that is going to be, it has to be out sometime in 2023 or before. So it could have a movie, a TV show, hell, Red Rising has a board game. If it's in the works, I'm going to say don't count it because uh, we know how many different adaptations have been canceled. For Zippy Zamboni, you are going to read a book that involves travel a journey or vacation. Something in which the main character is traveling to a different destination, likely that they've never been before. So this could be a vacation romance. This could be a vacation gone wrong locked room thriller. This could be a like Hobbit-like journey epic fantasy. And the last of our prompts is cold counterattacks and that is using a random number generator. You can pick your, out your TBR for the month and do a random number generator on the computer and it can pick one of those. You could do your entire own TBR. Anything that means a random number generator picked your thing. I'll answer a couple of FAQs before I sign off. How much do I need to read to participate? As much as you like or as little as you like. Don't push yourself if you're going to be going into a slump. And also if you're afraid that you're not going to be contributing much, that's okay. Your teams are going to be fine. What type of book counts as reading? Anything that you count as reading. As long as you put in the page count, you're okay. 
Uh, you do not have to read only the genre of your team. You can read anything you want. Can you count DNFs towards your book count? If you read over 50% of it in the month of December, you can count it. So if you have a book that you carried over from November, as long as you read over 50% of it in December, you can count it. And same for DNFs, if you read a four, if you DNF'd a 400 page book at page 250, that's over 50%, you can count it. However, mark the number of pages that you actually read in December. And instead of writing 400 pages down, I would write 250. The team standings are going to be calculated by the average number of points per person. So there is going to be the total number of points that a team has, but because not every team is going to be even, it is going to be divided by the number of active members. So as long as someone has read one book on their team, that is an active member. So if there are 12 people who signed up for Castle Coco, and by the end of the month, 10 of them have read a book, the total score is going to be divided by 10, and that is the final team score. But our teams are relatively even at the moment. We have almost 100 people signed up for this already, which is incredible. Didn't think I would get that far, um, but don't be afraid to pick a team that has more people because you feel bad for another team, it is going to be averaged. Do you have to participate in the Instagram or the Discord or the whatever to participate in the readathon? No, you don't have to do anything you don't want to. The only thing that has to be done is to log your books. I will also say, please make sure that when you are logging your books, use the same email every single time. That essentially functions as like a username because I am going to be checking how many unique emails there are. If you put in a different email, you are going to be decreasing the amount of points that your team has. You're gonna be hurting yourself. And I have put a reminder on there. Uh, how many prompts can I use per book? As many as count and are applicable to your team. Does this book count for this prompt? Uh, use your own discretion. Honestly, I'm not gonna police you. Um, there are going to be people who are gonna err on either side. So law of averages is out. Um, but if you really, really have a dying question, send it in the Discord or DM me on Instagram at my regular Instagram account or the Freezeathon account, I will get to you. If you want examples of how to score a book, I do have an example in the official rules. If you have any questions at all about this readathon, please let me know. This has been my baby for months. I have worked so hard on it and you know coding this has been harder than I thought it was going to be but it was a lot of fun putting the spreadsheet together so we are all ready to go for December and now all we need is for you all to build your TBRs and then we can start reading. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you will join us for Freezeathon. I am so 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 excited. If you would like to find me and the Readathon anywhere all of the links are in the description and as always I will see you in the next one. Thank you.